Hey everybody, my name is Kimmy and welcome to Always On The Flow. So today's practice is going to be about reducing mood swings. This is by request, it is very popular among my college students and I think it's actually because they are very self-aware, way more self-aware than I was at that age. But anyway, I think it's something that could be beneficial for everyone. Usually our mood swings kind of flare up, I guess would be a good term for it, when something doesn't go as expected. So first things first, let's let go of any judgment or any expectation in our practice today. You might not have any idea what I'm going to be throwing at you today. And that's okay, because you're in control of how you respond. Yes, let's get to it. So we'll start out in a seated position, whatever seated position feels good for us. Either bringing our eyes to a soft gaze or perhaps gently closing them. Hands can be in our knees with our palms facing up or they can be on our lap. And whatever feels good right now, just to kind of settle ourselves into our mat, get settled into our practice, Maybe that means taking a couple of head rolls or shoulder rolls, maybe a little adjustment from side to side, whatever you need to do just to feel more comfortable on the mat, that's what you do. We'll feel our chest rise with every breath that we take in and feel our shoulders just melt away from our ears with every exhale. We find this breath rhythm, this breath pace that is unique to us. And we remember that our practice is exactly that. It is our practice. There's no need to try and keep up with anybody or try to slow down for anyone. It's about us and where we are. So let's give ourselves permission right now to just let go of any expectation that we might have of ourselves. We'll set our intention here, whatever it is that we want to dedicate our practice to, whatever it is that we need a little more of or a little less of. Maybe it's some healing energy toward us, or maybe we wanna send some healing energy to someone else. Whatever our intention is, we'll let that, that thought gently float on into our mind. And on our exhale, we'll just send it on its way. Couple more breaths here. Remembering that if we find that our mind starts to wander to other places, thinking about whatever we were doing before we sat down on our mat, or maybe we're thinking about what's next. Let our mind wander. Go ahead. And when you're ready, bring your presence back to your mat. Bring yourself back to your breath. We'll go ahead, gently open up our eyes, sitting up nice and tall. Let's lift the hands all the way up toward the sky. Exhale, release. Just a couple of big stretches. Inhale and exhale. Let's do that again. Inhale and exhale. Nice job. So we'll swing our feet around to the side, make our way to all fours, getting ready for some cat cows. We're just gonna warm up that spine. Hands are under the shoulders, knees are under the hips. Let's take a gentle breath in and exhale round that spine, pulling the belly button in. And inhale. Make a U with the back, relax the belly. Exhale round, always leading with the tailbone first when we take that round. Head is the last thing to move. 
And again, when we take that U with our back, leading with the tailbone. Yes, a couple more here. You know that if our wrists get a little tender, we can make fists for wrists. Going at our own pace, our own breath. Sometimes I like to go into Spider-Man hands. Yeah. Let's do just one more of each here. We'll finish up on a round. And then hang out in that neutral position, the all fours. Let's walk our hands forward just a couple of inches, tuck the toes under, make our way to our first downward dog. Send those hips to the sky, yes. Maybe even walking the dog here if that feels good. Letting the head be heavy, making any adjustment that we need to. Pressing the palms of the hand into the earth. Moving with breath, knowing we can take a break at any time, we can find rest. We do have a child's pose coming up in just a couple of breaths. Let that breath go. Nice, all right. Let's send both knees all the way back down to the mat. Take our time getting there, and then send those hips back toward our heels, finding our child's pose. Yes. And I'm gonna open up my knees just because it feels better for a little more room for my chest or tummy area. But you know, you make the pose fit your body. I love this idea of making the pose fit the body, not the other way around, because we are so just, inundated with images of what we think yoga poses should look like but a lot of times it's one type of body that we see very often so there's kind of this expectation and as I have just really kind of worked on my yoga practice and thought about it a little bit more just kind of like you know what one instructor said it to me. I don't know if it was during a training or if I was just in a regular class. They said, listen, you make the pose fit your body, not the other way around. And that was just really life-changing for me. It's like, okay. And as I apply that to other areas of my life, it's like, yeah, why not? Every single body is different. How can a pose look one way? on every single person. It's like, it's time scientifically does not work. All right, from here. <laughs> Let's make our way back to downward dog. However you wanna get there as I go on my little tangent. <laughs> oh yeah, listen, I grew up, they called me motor mouth. I talk a lot, that's why I became a teacher. Let's gently bend those knees. Go ahead, walk the feet all the way up to the top of the mat. Rise up, big breath in. Hands come all the way up toward the sky as we bring the hands down to heart center. Nice job. Let's start a little sun salutation. Take a big breath in. Hands come all the way up. Soften the knees, exhale, fold. Bring the hands to our shins for this nice flat back, nice long neck. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step on out to a plank, one foot at a time. Remember, we can send our knees down or they can stay up. Peering over the edge, lower chaturanga. <sighs> Gentle cobra, squeeze the glutes, taking pressure out of that lower back, and exhale to downward dog. <sighs> Let's send that right foot to the sky. And when you're ready, however many steps it takes to get there, let's bring the right foot in between the hands. That's it. We'll spin that left foot flat now. So the left toes are aiming toward the upper left corner of the mat. And let's rise up for warrior one. Exhale into warrior two, looking over that right hand. Yes. Couple of breaths here in warrior two. Making sure this knee is right on top of the ankle or it can be a little bit behind. We don't want it past the ankle. This left foot 
is parallel to the short side of the mat. Hips are facing me, facing the camera. There we go. And we're looking over that right hand. This is warrior two, nice and strong. It's called warrior for a reason. Finding a little movement here. Maybe inhale, straighten that right leg just a little bit. Don't have to lock it into place. Come on back, yes. Inhale and exhale. One more time, inhale, exhale. Let's drop that right elbow to the right thigh, finding side angle as that left arm just hovers over that left ear. And from here, let's pull that left shoulder down. There we go. If this is a little too much, rest your left hand behind you, if that feels good. Oh yeah. Nice. Gentle breath in here. On our exhale, we'll find our way back to that side angle. Think about one long line from that middle finger all the way down to the left side of the foot. And let's find our way back to warrior two. Straightening that right leg. Let's inhale, reach the right hand over those toes. Come on back to center. We're prepping for triangle. Inhale, reach. Exhale, back to center. Inhale, reach last time, and then just drop that right hand to the leg. Left hand comes toward the sky, and we just let gravity do the work. Find where our triangle is. Maybe that right hand just gently rests on the ankle. Maybe if you have a block nearby, you can put the block here, rest your hand on there. Still breathing here. Resisting that temptation to kind of fold forward just so you can try to reach the floor. Remember, you don't have anything to prove. Just showing up, that's the hard part. No expectation, no judgment. Wherever you are is where you're supposed to be. Let's put a little bend in that right knee and we'll come on back up, looking over that right hand to warrior two. Let's straighten that right leg. Bring the right toes so they're facing the same direction as the left. Let's bring the hands to the hips. Gentle inhale here, and let's take a nice fold. Just relax. Yes, let those hands just dangle. Bringing that right hand to the floor in front of our face. And let's open up for a little twist, lifting the left hand toward the sky. If it feels better to rest it at our lower back, we know that's an option. Let's just make sure that left shoulder is opening up. It's not trying to be closed off. Yes. Let's lift that left hand back up toward the sky. Take an inhale. Exhale, bring the hand on down. All right, let's take that twist to the other side. Left hand is on the floor or on the mat. Open up, lifting the right hand toward the sky or let it rest at the lower back as we open up in the right shoulder. And breathe. <laughs> Sometimes I catch myself holding my breath. It's so weird. I don't mean to do it. It's like when an instructor reminds me, make sure you're breathing. It's like, oh my gosh, why wasn't I breathing? That's why we call this a practice, not a perfect. Let's bring that right hand on down. We'll bring our hands to our hips, draw the shoulders back as we lift everything up. Yes, all right. So from here, make sure the right foot is parallel to the short side of the mat. Turning those left toes now. We're hitting warrior two on this other side. Bending into that left knee, extend the arms out. 
That's it, looking over that left hand. Inhale, maybe finding a little movement on the exhale. Inhale, and exhale. Let's do that one more time. Inhale, and exhale, yes. All right, from here, let's find side angle. Drop the left elbow to the thigh, right arm just hovers over the ear. Side angle, whatever feels right for you. Making sure we're not digging into that thigh, we're not dumping all that energy into that left thigh, we're gently resting it there. Because when we gently rest it there, we're using the strength from our core and from our tummy muscles and our lower back to kind of stay active. If we just dump all that energy in here, we're putting way too much pressure on that left leg. Let's take a gentle breath in and exhale. Come on back to warrior two, looking over that left hand. Let's get ready for triangle. Straighten that left leg. If you wanna have a little bend in it, you can. Let's inhale and reach. Let the hip just kind of sass out to the side. Come on back to center. Inhale, reach. Exhale, center. Inhale, reach. Drop that left hand down, finding triangle on this side. One side might be very different than the other. Right hand can be toward the sky or it can be resting in our lower back. Yes, yes, yes. Gentle breath in. One more exhale. Inhaling to prepare. Let's put a little bend in that left knee and we'll come on back. Looking over that left hand. Whew, that was a good one. All right, let's straighten that left leg, turn the left toes, just start to bring those feet together. Shake it out. All right, setting up for a tree pose. We're in the balance portion of our practice today. So bringing our hands to heart center, shifting our weight onto our right side, and let's open up in that left leg. If we need any assistance, if we're going to honor our body for real, then let's make sure that we ask for help or get help when we need it. So if we need a chair or we wanna to move to a wall to hold on to something, now is the time to do that, it's all good. No judgment, no expectation. So from here, this is option one. Option two, you can bring that left foot up against the standing leg. Maybe a little bend in that right knee if we need it. Option three, heel below the knee joint. Option four, <laughs> don't fall over, Kimmy. There we go. <laughs> Toes above the knee joint. Always avoiding that knee joint. We don't wanna push anything in our body in any direction it was not made to go in. Hands could stay at heart center or we can lift them toward the sky. I had a student the other day when we did this practice, she was right here and I love this. I was like, this is very powerful. I find this a little more powerful for myself than reaching them all the way up toward the sky. I, th I feel like this is a goddess. It's a little part of that goddess pose almost, which we've done before. It's like goddess tree, yes. <laughs> I like how that sounds. Let's breathe. <sighs> Remembering that if we feel a little off balance today, it's okay. Maybe that's where we are right now. We have the freedom and the choice to come out of a pose, to change our mind, to make a different decision at any time. We are in control of how we respond and in what actions we take, we want to do. Let's take a gentle breath in. 
On our exhale, bring everything down. Nice. Shifting our weight onto that left side now. Hitting tree pose on the other side. Nice and tall. Sometimes that hip wants to kind of jet out to the side. We're in control. Open up in the right leg. Toes gently up against that standing leg. Heel below the knee joint or toes above. Finding the right tree for us, whether it's hands at heart center, this goddess move, or extending the arms all the way, pulling the shoulders down. Remembering that we can be rooted and firm and stable and strong in our beliefs and our values, just like a tree, very, very rooted into the earth with conviction, with beliefs. But like a tree, growth happens when we are flexible. So let's just make this commitment, especially when we're talking about reducing mood swings. We remember how flexible we are. We have to bend so that we don't break. Gentle breath in here. On our exhale, let's bring everything down. <sighs> yes. Shake it on out. Nice. All right, let's step to the top of our mat if we're not already there. Feet are about hip distance apart. We're gonna take a sun salutation before we make our way all the way down to the mat. So let's take a big breath in. Soften the knees, exhale, fold. Hands come to the shins for this nice flat back, nice long neck. Exhale, fold. Plant the hands, step on out to a plank, one foot at a time. From here, let's all send our knees down, relax the top of the feet. We're gonna lower all the way down to the mat. Setting up for bow pose, no, not bow pose, locust. <laughs> locust pose or sphinx or just resting here on our belly. So first things first, locust pose. This is more of a Pilates slash physical therapy move. If you have any lower back issues or there's some type of previous injury or it just doesn't serve you today, listen to your body, honor your body. You know your body better than anyone. So otherwise, if we're going into locust, legs are nice and long, squeeze the glutes. That takes tension out of that lower back. Arms are alongside the body, hovering over the mat. Shoulders are pulled away from the ears. This is that neutral position, just looking at the top of our mat, keeping that neck nice and long. Legs don't have to be glued together, just, you know, kind of close. We'll take a gentle breath in. And if it feels good for us, lift the legs, lift the upper body, squeeze the glutes, don't let go. Think about pulling that belly button in toward the spine. Slowing down the breath, making sure we are not holding our breath. And we'll take a gentle inhale, maybe get a little higher on that exhale. Inhale, exhale, lower on down. Just melt into the mat here. Let those shoulders just melt on in. And from here, we'll find that neutral position again. Arms hovering over the mat, legs nice and long. Squeeze the glutes, take that tension out. Gentle breath in and lift. Still breathing, still squeezing. 
Maybe our next exhale takes us a little bit higher. Gentle breath in. Exhale, go ahead, melt into the mat. Yes. All right. Setting up for a Sphinx pose. It's exactly how it sounds. Let's bring those elbows underneath our shoulders. Hands are extending right out from underneath, or hands are extended right out from the elbows. So from here, it's very easy to just kind of let that belly relax and let that back curve, but let's find somewhere where it's active. So pull the belly button in toward the spine. You saw that happen. You saw my back just kind of rise up. So this is me relaxing, chilling, I'm on the beach. <laughs> Now, watch my tummy. Watch where the back starts to rise because I pull that belly button in toward the spine and keep it active. Here it is. Yes. That activeness, if that's a word, that's where we want to be. Sphinx pose. Shoulders are pulled away from the ears. Fingers are nice and wide. Couple more breaths here. Still breathing. Gentle inhale. And on our exhale, let's shift on back to child's pose. This child's pose is gonna feel so good. Oh yeah, I can already feel it. Going all the way back. Might even feel good to bring the arms alongside the body. Let the shoulders just relax over the knees. Still breathing here. Very nice. So from our child's pose, let's go ahead, swing our feet around to the side, make our way onto our bottom. And let's roll all the way down onto the mat. A little supine twist here coming up. Let's bring the knees in for a, for a nice, gentle hug. Rock a little bit side to side. From here, let's drop our feet down to the mat. Open up our arms like we're making the top of a capital H and let's drop those knees over to one side, keeping both shoulders on the mat. Taking our eye gaze to the opposite direction that our knees are in. Nice. Taking that gentle breath in. On the exhale, bring everything back to center. Taking that inhale and exhale, drop those knees over to the left side, keeping both shoulders on the mat or just the opposite side or whatever side you didn't do before. And let's take our eye gaze in the opposite direction that our knees are in. Enjoy this little restorative twist here. Good. All right. From here, let's take a gentle breath in. Everything comes back to center. Bring the knees into our chest. Just rock a little bit, massage that lower back. And now let's rock ourselves up to seated. Extending those legs out nice and long. We're in a staff pose here, sitting up tall. Lifting the hands toward the sky, take a big breath in. And exhale, fold. Just let the head hang, let those shoulders and back round. I'm gonna bend my knees a little bit just because that feels better. And that's how I can get a little deeper into this stretch. Make the pose fit your body. 
Still breathing here, wherever we are. Gentle breath in. On the exhale, let's release. Come all the way up. Lowering back down one more time. So from here, it's Yogi's Choice. We can find legs up the wall, which is where I'm going to be right now. If shoulder stand is a part of your practice, remember we never want to move our neck. Or you can go into plow. Again, never moving that neck. That's where those feet can come all the way back and touch the floor behind the head. I usually don't like to do those poses um, on the video because I think that when it's a beginner person or it's someone who hasn't really um, practiced those poses very much, I just think it's, I, I feel more comfortable kind of cueing people in person. So you won't really see me teaching things like wheel or um, shoulder stand or headstands just because those are a little more, I'm gonna say advanced because I don't think I'm advanced and I am learning those things. Um, but I would just say that those are just a little more complex. Now, we're still here in legs up the wall and I'm talking this long on purpose because we're here for a full minute and we're about halfway there. <laughs> so that's why I just like to say, if this is a part of your practice and you've been practicing shoulder stand or plow or you know, headstand or, or wheel. If those are things that you like to do, put me on pause. <laughs> put me on pause. It's your practice. You go for it. Okay. Otherwise, ah, whew, yes. Remember, you can have a little bend in those knees if you need to. That's just where I am today. Sometimes I'm a little bit longer, but that's a little too much today. So we'll take a gentle breath in. Give ourselves a hug one last time. Yes, we'll rock ourselves up to seated. Knowing if we would like to lay down and take a Shavasana laying down, we absolutely can. Otherwise, finishing out just with a little seated meditation here. Maybe bringing our hand to our heart, other hand to the belly, gently closing the eyes. Just a couple of breaths. Honoring these two things that keep us going, that have just brought us through so much. Remembering that we have so much to give. So much that only we can give. And so much that we're going to receive that is only for us remembering that we certainly cannot control the noise around us, whatever that noise is, stress, people, <laughs> assignments, exams, decisions, family, friends. We can only control how we respond. And when we let go or release expectation we can really discover the amount of control that we actually have of ourselves. We'll go ahead, gently open up our eyes, sitting up nice and tall, releasing those hands. Let's take a big breath in. Hands come all the way up. Exhale, let go of everything we don't need today. Inhale, taking in all that's good that's coming our way and releasing everything and everyone that does not work for our good. One more breath in, bringing our hands up and to heart center. Thank you so much for practicing yoga with me today, for taking this time for yourself and remembering that you are so incredible. You're so incredible that there is only one of you. 
So release judgment, release expectation. Remember how powerful you are and always make time to find your flow. Namaste.